July 21st, 1969, remains burned in the collective memory to this day. That day, when mankind succeeded in setting foot on a foreign celestial body for the first time, was to go down in history for all time. After the two U.S. astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin set foot on the moon, we thought we had reached a new chapter in manned space travel. However, a closer look into the past shows that the lunar visits of our species soon came to an abrupt end. The last manned lunar landing to date was around 50 years ago. While, in the past decades, with ever more progressive technology, we've been able to decode some secrets of the constant companion of our blue homeland planet, the only natural satellite of the Earth still hides numerous mysteries, still waiting to be unraveled. Find out which five galactic mysteries of the Moon remain to be solved in today's video. Are you passionate about fascinating phenomena and exciting discoveries in the universe? Then remember to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to learn more about these interesting topics on a regular basis. By giving us a thumbs up, you're showing us that we can keep you engaged with the content of our videos. Lunar Earthquakes The seismometers left behind by the Apollo missions recorded around 12,000 lunar earthquakes by the end of the investigations in 1977. However, these numerous natural tremors on the Earth's satellite cannot be compared in terms of intensity with the quakes that occur time and again on our blue home planet. For example, the strongest recorded moon quakes reached a magnitude of just under 5 which in turn corresponds to only a fraction of the magnitude of the most intense earthquakes here. During the measurements, the seismic waves of the moonquakes could be followed for up to four hours. This fact means that they were only extremely weakly attenuated inside the celestial body. In more than 50% of the cases studied, the seismic source of the moonquakes was located at a depth of between 480 and 600 miles. A direct connection between the tremors on the Earth's satellite and its orbit could be established so that these quakes occurred approximately every 14 days. As a cause, the fluctuating tidal forces are cited, which depend upon the distance of the Moon to the Earth. What makes terrestrial experts suspicious is the fact that the hypocenters of the tremors do not distribute themselves evenly over the entire mantle shell of the celestial body. In fact, most of the seismic sources were located in only about 100 different zones, each of which was only a mile or so in size. Why the hypocenters of the quakes on the moons are present in such an unusual concentration is still an open mystery. Since the corresponding data are already many decades old, new research missions are needed to get on top of this cosmic question one day. The Origin of the Moon All scientific realizations have still not managed to answer the question about the emergence of the moon incontestably. Over the course of centuries, the most diverse theories developed, which try to decode this galactic mystery. Before the first celestial body formed within our solar system, the corresponding area was adorned by the so-called solar nebula. Within cosmology, this term describes an interstellar molecular cloud consisting primarily of gas and only relatively little dust. After the solar nebula collapsed about 4.6 billion years ago, the Sun emerged from it as a massive center. The material still in the protoplanetary disk was responsible for the remaining celestial bodies of our solar system. How the Earth-Moon system originated is, in the end, uncertain. The secession theory represents the assumption that the glowing hot, fast-rotating proto-Earth cut off a kind of galactic drop which later formed into the natural satellite of our home planet. Opposite this is the so-called capture theory, according to which the Earth and the Moon originated in completely different parts of the solar system. When the two independent celestial bodies met on their orbits, our planet is said to have caught the satellite by its gravitational force. If one follows the many moons theory, the Earth caught several satellites at the same time with its gravity. Later, the snatched celestial bodies collided with each other, and today's Earth-Moon was formed from the fragments. Some years back, one hypothesis won the most supporters, the collision theory. This assumption is based on the fact that the proto-Earth collided relatively gently with another large body in the past. As a result, this collision matter was flung away, 
from which later the moon was composed. Water on the Moon There is no question that the moon is an extremely dry celestial body. Despite this, however, in the summer of 2008, earthly experts succeeded in detecting tiny traces of water in Apollo samples with the help of a new method. The corresponding residues were found in small glass spheres that have a volcanic origin. If this groundbreaking discovery is linked to collision theory, it means that not all the water evaporated after the massive galactic collision that created the satellite. In 2009, NASA's Moon Mineralogy Mapper instrument found evidence that near-surface water deposits exist in the shadowed areas of the lunar poles. Data collected as part of the LCROSS mission also suggests that Earth's satellite harbors large quantities of water. In detail, evidence of at least 600 million tons of water ice was discovered at the North Pole of the celestial body alone. By means of so-called secondary ion mass spectrometry, the experts recognized that the water on the moon is exceedingly different from the cool wetness on Earth in terms of its hydrogen isotope ratio. Last year, scientists succeeded for the first time in discovering water on the sunlit side of the moon. This extraordinary discovery suggests that water on the moon is much more accessible than experts had previously suspected. Conversely, this also means that the water there could play an important role in future lunar landings. It could possibly be used in the course of future projects for the production of oxygen for breathing or for the production of hydrogen for engines. But how could water actually get onto our blue home planet's constant companion? At present, no one can answer this exciting question with absolute certainty. Current theories range from outgassing reactions that push the water embedded into the moon's interior towards the surface, to meteorite impacts that brought the water to the satellite in the first place, or to chemical interactions catalyzed by the solar wind. Bound Rotation if a celestial body always turns one and the same side to its cosmic fixed point, this is called tidal blocking or bound rotation in the technical world. As is well known, the Earth's moon also shows this trapped rotation pattern, which makes it impossible for us to catch a glimpse of the moon's backside from our earthly vantage point. While that area is traditionally also called the dark side of the moon, in truth, it also runs through the different moon phases, only in the reversed order. So when the satellite on the firmament appears to us like a weak new moon crescent, the opposite area of the celestial body is bathed in the glistening light of the sun. Although the moon's bound rotation fits into a fairly widespread galactic scheme, we still don't know exactly what conditions favor tidal blocking of a celestial body. Lunar Transient Phenomena Time and again, the moon presents us with some mind-boggling light displays, the origin of which experts have long been in the dark about. Among experts, these mysterious phenomena are called lunar transient phenomena. In detail, this refers to brief, local changes in color or brightness on the lunar surface that are registered during astronomical observations. So far, more than 1,500 such phenomena have been reported. However, since many of these sightings were recorded by untrained observers and under extreme conditions, at least some of the reported lunar transient phenomena are doubtful. The situation is different, however, for those observations that were made by experienced astronomers. For example, the Soviet astronomer Nikolai Kazirev succeeded in the late 1950s in detecting such a change in brightness in the crater Alphonsus. There are different explanations for how these light shows on the moon come about. On the one hand, it's conceivable that smaller impacts on the lunar surface are the cause of these unique phenomena. Furthermore, some experts consider it likely that these are the visible effects of residual volcanism. Although the moon is basically a cooled celestial body with no evidence of active volcanism, there may be small areas of still molten rock. From these unsolidified areas, volcanic gases would reach the surface, where they cause a temporary change of the albedo by swirling the regolith, also known as moon dust. This thesis is also supported by the fact that the lunar transient phenomena documented so far are unusually concentrated on few lunar craters. 
According to this, it is above all Aristarchus in the northwest of the earth-facing side, Plato on the wall plane, and Alphonsus at the eastern edge of the Mare Nubian that seem to be directly connected with the generation of the light plays. We're interested in your opinion. Which lunar mystery has amazed you the most? Do you know of any other mysterious lunar secrets that didn't make it into our post? Just drop your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on today's video in the comments. Are you in the mood for more exciting articles on the topic of outer space? Then take a look at the other videos on our channel that we've linked for you in the credits. Thanks for your interest, take care, and we'll see you next time.